You got still work, but what you got still work? The next song that we're about to hear might be the greatest song ever written about anyone's childhood. You're just one of the most incredible musicians I have ever met. We are honoring one of the most important, groundbreaking, enduring, and yes, visionary musical artists in history. Hi, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder! Stevie Wonder! Stevie Wonder! This is a, one of the great geniuses of our time. Hi, my name is Victoria Theodore, and I've had the honor of performing alongside Stevie Wonder on several tours. Stevie Wonder is one of the greatest musical geniuses of all time. His music has affected and influenced and inspired people across generations across the world. His music is impactful, beautiful, political, and life-changing. Stevie Wonder is a master at creating the catchiest, most unique keyboard intros. Possibly his most recognizable and famous keyboard intro is the funky clavinet intro to Superstition. What makes this intro so interesting is that it's on the clavinet, which we really hadn't heard before in that way in popular music. Stevie utilizes the E-flat pentatonic scale and uses notes within that to create. Trust me, every time the audiences would hear that keyboard intro, they would all jump to their feet and they'd start dancing. I Wish is another great example of an iconic keyboard intro. And we started the first track with... Keyboards. In this song, Stevie had the keyboard part, which he played on a Fender Rhodes, doubled up with the bass guitar, which took the sound to a whole new level. And when they played it together, immediately groovy. So if you break down that intro, it's really just E flat minor to A flat seven. It's just alternating between those two chords, but in a really unique way where he outlines it with the bass line and then he does a syncopated keyboard part along with it. The biggest element in establishing the groove of I Wish is the syncopation between the bass line that's happening on eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, and the chords that happen on the upbeats, one and, and, and so together, so there's this push-pull that you just immediately start dancing to. On the other side of the stylistic spectrum, we have You Are the Sunshine of My Life. The intro to this love song uses a scale called the whole tone scale, which was a very uncommon and unexpected choice for a pop song. A whole tone scale is a scale where every note is a whole tone apart. Most of us wouldn't hear that and go, that belongs in a heartfelt love song. But in the intro of the song, Stevie plays it like this. The reason that sounds so good is it's actually over a G flat augmented chord, which gives it this very magical quality. Stevie's ability to blur genres and effortlessly create timeless music is one of his greatest strengths as a musician. One of the ways he does this? Harmony. Stevie is a master of harmony. All too often, popular music is limited to three or four chords, often just in triad form, simple. Stevie infuses his songs with chords that come directly from the jazz lineage. 
Let's look at the chord progression for Isn't She Lovely. It starts with a C sharp minor nine to F sharp dominant nine to B flat sus to E major. So it's, the song is in the key of E major, but the way that Stevie utilizes this chromatic movement da, 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 it creates a melody even within the chord progression itself. And then his melody on top of that. It's magic. And I wrote My Sharia Moore in like 1966. So how old were you then when you wrote My Sharia Moore? I was 15 going on 16. 15? That's remarkable. My Sharia Moore, lovely as a summer. If I didn't know you better, I'd call you a liar. <laughs> Look at my eyes, you know what I'm talking about. Another great example of Stevie's harmonic genius is found in My Sharia Moore. So this song is in the key of D flat major, but it starts on G flat major seven. And then it goes to B major, but it actually has a sharp four. That's the F. And then it goes to B dominant, still with a sharp four and then to the home key, D flat again. So the way he utilizes it. So beautiful. But the way he adds the sharp four makes it more dreamy. It feels like young love. In several of Stevie's songs, he takes you on a harmonic journey. He starts in one key and then does his incredible magic, and you end up in another key without even realize that you've changed keys. In Overjoyed, it's in the key of E flat major, but it starts on a B flat minor chord in first inversion. Then you end up starting the song in E flat major on the one. He takes you through a few progressions. And then suddenly he moves you to the two of the chord, which is F major in first inversion. And then we go to the major version of the three, G major in first inversion. And that G major serves as the five to the keep C. All of a sudden, you're in a new key. You didn't even know it happened. The way that Stevie created this incredible motion in his songs, I think was a combination of just innate ability as well as well-earned mastery of music and understanding how music can impact us and how when you shift from one key to another, it shifts something in you. And that's part of the magic of Stevie's music. And maybe too, if you would believe, you too might be overjoyed, overloved, over. Beat this thing. We kicked it down on the ground. Come on, work thing, so I said. Piano, clavinet, Rhodes, arp, the list goes on. Stevie used them all. He was a pioneer of sound when it came to keyboards. Welcome to the inner sanctum of Stevie the Mad Musician Wonder. One of the craziest instruments he used was a massive modular synthesizer called Tonto. Tonto stands for the original new timbral orchestra. What Stevie did when he got to, to Tonto, he was able to play all the parts himself. He said, this is absolutely, this is much more like the music that's in my mind. It was based on a Moog Modular Series 3 synthesizer with added ARP and Oberheim modules. Those were like fresh sounds, you know? Um, you can play the same thing on a piano or on the organ, 
but it ain't gonna give you that same edge. This massive synth was the largest of its day and designed to be played by multiple players at once. You can hear this synth on Stevie's albums, Music of My Mind, Talking Book, and Fulfilling Ness's first finale. One of Stevie's signature instruments was the Honer D6 clavinet, which you can hear along with the Tonto synthesizer in Superstition. The percussive clavinet sound is now synonymous with funk music in large part due to Stevie Wonder. Stevie loved sound design so much that he actually decided to alter the sound of the clavinet and add the Mutron 3 envelope filter to give us that signature sound we hear in higher ground. <laughs> Rhodes' electric piano was released in 1965 and played a major role in Stevie's new sound. It can be heard in songs such as You Are the Sunshine of My Life and Too High. In addition to the clavinet and the Rhodes, Stevie loved to use the Moog and the ARP 2600. Stevie, don't stop pressing it. Slow down. Similar to the Tonto synth, the ARP 2600 and Moog had to be operated by Stevie himself. His use of these instruments has influenced generations of keyboard players and encouraged many to explore the possibilities of electronic sound manipulation in popular music. And not only did he express it, he did it in a rhythm that was so unique. I said, what was that? He said, Oh, that's just something I'm working on. I said, I, I said, what is it though? He said, oh, it's, it's a Stevie song. I said, well, I never heard that before. That song really, um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I said, what you want for it? It's mine, I want it. In the 1960s and 70s, there were a lot of artists who were performing and writing in styles that had a lot of rhythm and a lot of groove. But the way that Stevie utilized it caused it to be even more popular across the board, outside of rhythm and blues and crossing over into popular music. Coming out of the era of race records, where there was a clear distinction between music for black people and music for white people, um, Stevie Wonder's music really was able to create a bridge between the two. R&B and pop music became one. Well, I, I try to do a variety of things, so I'd like to be just recognized as me being Stevie Wonder. When I see Do I Do blends elements of funk and jazz, showcasing Stevie's versatility as a musician. The extended instrumental sections, including Stevie's harmonica solo and the horn arrangements, add layers of rhythm and groove to the track. What's really unique about Do I Do is the bass line that Nate Watts performs. It is just driving, it's non-stop. It's like a freight train going through the entire song. It's bouncy and, and joyful. So when Stevie plays the piano against that bass line, it creates this amazing syncopation. It is irresistible. For example, Sir Duke is Stevie Wonder's ode to the genius composer Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington was known for his incredible jazz arrangements, and Stevie wrote this song, which is joyful and upbeat, highlighting his knack for creating catchy rhythms. The rhythm guitar work, the percussive elements, Stevie's vocal phrasing, and especially those horn arrangements create a captivating groove. Stevie 
was also no stranger to experimenting in different genres. Don't You Worry About a Thing was one of Stevie's Latin-inspired songs that made use of the clave and many percussion instruments. This turned into one of Stevie's many feel-good anthems. Also interesting about this song is how Stevie uses such intricate chords. And then he changes keys. And ends up back in the original key. And so it just takes you through a whole world, rhythmically and harmonically. I'm so very happy that God used me as a vehicle, hopefully to express the spirit of unity through music, oneness through music, peace through music, love through music, and the perpetuation and preservation of life through music. A boy's born in hot Stevie Wonder's legacy is about so much more than music. An encounter with Stevie, whether in person or simply through his music, is an experience that changes you for the better. His music transcends generations, his melodies are timeless, and his lyrics are filled with messages that resonate deeply. And how does the song come to you? Do you have to sit down to write it and, and intend to write it? It's or? all a, a matter of inspiration. You know, it's, uh, whatever happens to me within a particular day mm -hmm. encourages me to write. Stevie's songs will continue to be anthems of love, unity, and the pursuit of a better world. In his legacy, we find a perfect example of how one artist can change the world. You know, he's blind, and you, and you sit there and you wonder, this, this, this man can't even see, but he sees so many more things that people with sight don't see. He is um, like an example of, of the best of what a human being can be. But through the eyes of our ears, we see the beauty of hope. We see the beauty of pain. When we hear those voices, we say, Dear God, let us sing forever. I'm Victoria Theodore. Thanks for watching The Genius of Stevie Wonder. I'll see you next time.